In this video, I'm going to show you Photoshop's new tool to automatically detect and remove distractions, like in this case, people in your images. So if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw files from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. Since I will be showing the whole editing process, as always, what we do first are the raw adjustments. So if you're just here for the tutorial part, make sure to check the chapters. As always, with a very contrast rich scene, what I want to do first is to merge an HDR image. So down below in the film strip, select all five images, right click and choose Merge to HDR. Without changing anything, once the preview loaded, just hit the Merge button. The Camera Raw Editor will create this HDR file for you on which we can now work on. So we are going to start with the basic adjustments. First, I want to crop this image because it's slightly tilted. So I'm going to fix the horizon. I'm just going to eyeball it. I don't think it needs to be that precise. Then I want to change the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This will overall lessen the contrast, which in turn just gives us more control over the contrast ourselves. Then let's expand the light panel to adjust the exposure of the image. For this scene, I do think it could use a little more brightness, so I'm going to bring up the exposure very gently. And I'm also going to raise the highlights. Doing this, I'm paying very close attention to the histogram because I don't want to go into the overexposed parts right here. But raising the highlights a little bit like that just helps to add some more punch to this scene. Also, I'm going to add further contrast by bringing down the shadows very, very gently. Again, looking at this histogram, you can see there is actually a little bit of clipping in the darker areas. So bringing down the shadows could potentially make that worse. I'm going to fix that by bringing up the blacks a little bit. And just like that, we got rid of that clipped area. Okay, I'm also going to bring up the whites a little bit just for some further contrast. And that's pretty much the image after the exposure adjustments. Now we're done in the light tab. Next up, let's adjust the color. And with that, we are going to work on the white balance and the vibrance. Since this was shot during sunset, I want this image to be a little bit warmer. So I'm going to bring up the white balance temperature a notch, introducing some more golden tones like that. Also, I want this image to be saturated. So I'm going to bring up the vibrance. Wonderful. I don't think I need to change much more in here. Then next, I want to head into the effects tab just adding a little bit of texture, which will make the image look sharper. And I'm also going to add a bit of clarity, which will boost the midtones contrast. And finally, I want to have a very, very subtle glow effect on top of this image. So I'm going to bring down the dehaze for that. Wonderful, that looks great already. Now, before we continue with those global adjustments, I want to focus on a few areas locally. And as always, we're going to do that with masking. So let's open up the masking panel and I want to start working on that reflection. Therefore, let's use a linear gradient and I'm just covering all that water in the foreground like this. Now, what I want to do in here is to add more punch by bringing up the contrast. I'm also going to bring up the clarity quite a lot since this always works great with, with reflections like that and we could use some more sharpness. So let's bring up the texture. All right, nice. Then I do want to work on the sky. Therefore, let's create a sky selection. I don't want to affect the whole sky. So I'm going to further modify this mask by subtracting a linear gradient and I'm going to subtract the right side of this sky part because that's the area where the light is coming into this image and I want to make the left side darker without affecting the right side to have a more natural effect. So this is looking pretty good and all I'm doing in here is to bring down the exposure a bit like this. We could introduce some more blue tones by bringing down the temperature very carefully just to give this image some more color contrast with the blue tones of the sky against the warmer highlights of this image. Now we're almost done with the masking. Just two more things I want to do. I want to create a radial gradient covering the center of the image. And I'm doing this because I want to introduce more brightness to the center, just bringing more attention into this area. And therefore, let's bring up the whites. I'm going to raise them all the way up. And I'm also going to introduce some more highlights, which will affect just those brighter trees in the foreground. Also, you could play around with the shadows, raising them a bit for more brightness. But that's looking good. 
Now, one more thing, I'm going to choose a color range mask with which I'm going to target the green highlights of the foreground like this. You can see that's a great mask for all these brighter green tones. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to just bring up the exposure and maybe even the whites to make these green parts a little bit brighter. Wonderful. That's the image after the masking adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick. Here's our image with the basic adjustments applied. And that's the image after the masking adjustments with a little more focus on the center part of this shot. So now that we're done with the masking, now let's do a little more color grading and I'm going to start this in the color mixer. I don't want to change that much in here, but what I want to do is to make the sky just a little bit darker. And since the sky consists mostly of blue tones, we can use the luminance tab in the HSL mixer. And I'm going to bring down the blue luminance, which in turn makes all the blue tones of the image darker. So let, let's not drop them too dramatically, but something around minus 10 looks quite nice. Then I also want to work on the saturation. Here, let's bring up orange for the golden hour tones. Let's also bring up yellow for the same effect. Maybe let's even raise the green tones a bit. And I'm going to bring up a blue as well. So that's looking great. I also want to do some split toning through the color grading panel itself. And here we want to start with the highlights. Obviously, we want to keep the warmer, warmer tones for the highlights. So we want to set up the hue in a way like that, choosing a very warm color tone right around here. And let's bring up the saturation. Looking great. I also want to keep working on the color balance by making use of the shadows in the split toning section. And I'm going to set up the hue to something cold right around here. And again, let's bring up the saturation. For the shadows, I usually don't go as high as with the highlights. I just want to have a very subtle blue tone in the shadows this way. And then a little more color grading in the calibration tab. As always for my images, what I want to do is to bring down the blue primary hue. This will change the sky tones in a very nice way, in my opinion. And I also want to bring up the blue primary saturation. All right, this is looking really, really good so far. Now, the only raw adjustments left to do for this image is the sharpening in the details tab. And as always, I'm starting by bringing down the radius. Then let's bring up the details all the way. I'm also going to add some masking so we don't sharpen the sky just like this. And then we can bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. So that's the image after the raw adjustments. Again, we can compare to before real quick. This is what we have started with. And here we have the edited raw image with much nicer colors and a much more balanced exposure. Now let's open up this object and check out Photoshop's new distraction removal tool. All right, so in this image, there are a few objects that are really, really distracting, like those people walking around in the distance and a few other things. Of course, we could just manually remove them, but sometimes that's a very time intensive task. What we can do now instead is we want to head up to the remove tool in our tools menu right here. And in this menu, choose the remove tool. Now up in here, there are two new drop down menus. First, we want to set the mode to generative AI on. This will just tell Photoshop to use generative AI when getting rid of these objects. Next up, there's this drop down menu, find distractions. Here we do have two options. We could click on wires and cables, which as the name suggests, would remove wires and cables, or we could click on people to get rid of the people. So I'm just clicking on the people button right here and Photoshop will automatically select all the people, even with the reflection in the water, as you can see. And actually it will also detect a few other random objects, which obviously aren't people, like in this case, this kind of well right here. Also, it didn't catch the reflection of it, but that doesn't matter that much. As you can see, it's not working perfect. Still, it will save a lot of time. Once it has found all the distractions, what I'm going to do next is to click this check icon on top. And with two clicks only, we got rid of 99% of the distracting objects in this image. Of course, if you want to clean up the image, 100% we still need to do some manual work, but I think it's a great addition to have this new function. So I'm going to continue, but I'm going to switch to the spot healing brush instead. 
And I'm just going to get rid of a few extra objects right here, which are really annoying. All right, you see, those were only some very, very minor things. I could have left them in the image, but I think it just looks better this way. And that's pretty much it for this new tool Adobe has added to Photoshop. So let me know what you think about it. Are you going to use it or are you still going to do it manually? If you have any questions left about anything, any part of the editing process for this image, let me know in the comments as well. And thank you so much for watching this video.